Let's investigate an isosceles right triangle that lives in the unit circle. First, let's have a look at this square. This square can actually be cut in half if we draw a line along the diagonal. And we can actually make this square into two triangles. And those triangles are very special triangles. They are isosceles triangles and they are right angled triangles. So this triangle, if we just focus on this bottom part over here, this triangle has this side and this side equal, and these two angles are also equal. In a square, all the angles are 90 degrees. Every angle is actually perpendicular. That's actually from the definition of a square. But over here, what we have is half of 90 degrees because this diagonal line has split this angle into two equal chunks. So this is actually 45 degrees. But I'm not going to write 45 degrees. I'm going to write pi on 4 radians. I'm also going to do that over here. We have pi on 4 radians. I'm going to set this side length, uh, this hypotenuse of the right angle triangle, equal to 1. And I'm also going to label this as x. And I'm also going to label this as x. So I'm going to use the same label because we know that this is an isosceles triangle. So these two lengths have to be the same. And this over here, I'm just taking to be equal to 1 because that's going to become very useful when we move on to this diagram in the unit circle. One little clarification I want to make. When you're looking at a circle and when you're measuring angles, this over here is taken to be 0. So 0 is uh, defined to be the positive axis over here. It's the positive horizontal axis. So this is the horizontal axis and this is the vertical axis. And we take the positive horizontal axis to be 0. If we go all the way around the circle and come back to where we started, that's the same as 2 pi radians. So 0 and 2 pi radians are actually at the same angle. And this guy over here, if we go half of the way around the circle, that's going to be pi radians. So pi radians is only halfway around the circle. So to go all the way around the circle, you have to go 2 times pi. But if you just want to go 90 degrees, that's the same as pi on 2. So pi on 2 uh, radians is the same as 90 degrees. I'll write that over here. 90 degrees is the same as pi on 2 radians. So that's a quarter of the entire uh, circle. And if you just want to go half of that distance or half of that angle, that's the same as pi on 4. And that is equal to 45 degrees. And this is the angle that we're interested in. This angle over here, that is 45 degrees, which is pi on 4 radians. So in the entire circle, you can fit 8 slices that are pi on 4 radians. So you can fit 2 in here, and you can fit 4 of these quarter slices over here. So you have 2 times 4, which is 8 in total. So 45 degrees times 8 gives you 360 degrees in total. So there's 360 degrees in 2 pi radians. So this is just a little clarification, uh, just so you can see where this value came from. We're using radians because radians are more universal and they're more convenient uh, because degrees are a little more arbitrary. You're just slicing up the circle into 360 chunks. But this is actually defined based on the radius of the circle. So here's what we have. We've taken this square, we've cut it in half, and we formed a isosceles, an isosceles right triangle. So this triangle has a right angle, and it's an isosceles triangle. So now let's solve for this side length over here, because this side length is going to become very important when we move over to that diagram. So let's use Pythagoras' theorem to solve for x. Here we have x squared plus x squared is equal to 1 squared. So the hypotenuse has unit length. So we have x squared plus x squared equals 1 squared. We can see that there's two copies of x squared, and that's going to give us 2x squared is equal to 1. So x squared is equal to 1 half if we divide both sides by 2. So now we have to take the square root. And when we take the square root, that's going to give us 1 over root 2. We're only going to consider the positive solution because a negative length does not make physical sense on this geometric picture over here. So only the positive solution is considered. Here we have x equal to 1 on square root of 2. What we can do is we can actually turn this into an equivalent expression. 
If we multiply by root 2 over root 2, we can rationalize the denominator. So the denominator is the bottom part of the fraction, and if we want to make that into a rational number, we can just multiply by this. This is the same as 1, right? Root 2 over root 2, that is the same as multiplying by 1. It's the same as multiplying by the multiplicative identity. It doesn't actually change the value. And if we do that, we can combine root 2 and root 2 in the bottom, and that's going to give us x equals square root 2 over 2. So this is a very important quantity that's going to keep showing up again and again and again. So these two guys are actually equivalent. Root 2 over 2 is the same as 1 on root 2. And you can actually see these guys get interchanged all the time. If you want to keep it in a form where the denominator is a rational number, then you will pick this form. And if you want to just keep it in the, in the simple form where we have 1 over root 2, you will keep it into this, in this form over here. So for the purposes of the next few videos, I'm going to keep rationalizing the denominators. But a lot of the time when we're, we're dealing with surds in denominators, we actually won't bother with rationalizing them because it's sometimes just more convenient to leave it in this form because we're going to end up squaring them anyway. So this is just two uh, forms that you need to be familiar with. And this is how you rationalize the denominator. So what we have is that this length over here is this length, and this length is also that length. So both of these lengths are the same. Now let's move on to this diagram over here. This diagram shows the top right quadrant of the unit circle. So this line over here, that is just the top right bit of the unit circle. We've just taken a quarter slice. So if we were looking at radians, this would be pi on 2 radians, from 0 to pi on 2 radians. That's this slice of the unit circle. And what I've done is I've actually embedded our triangle. This triangle, I've embedded it inside of the unit circle. So it lives inside the unit circle. One end is fixed to the origin. So this point over here, that's fixed to the origin. And one bit actually lies on the unit circle. That's because we've set this to be equal to 1. So this length is 1, and if that length is 1, it's actually going to be the radius of the circle. This is the radial distance. The distance from here to here is also 1, and this is 1. Every uh, point over here is one unit away from the origin. So what can we conclude about this triangle over here? We can conclude that this angle is pi on 4, because we've just embedded that inside, so pi on 4. Uh, and that actually comes from uh, when we split the, when we use this diagonal line to split the square in two, we've split this angle in two, and that's given us pi on 4. So this is actually a very useful triangle, because it's actually going to tell us the cosine and sine functions of pi on 4, or 45 degrees. The point over here can actually be written in Cartesian coordinates. And both the horizontal and vertical component are going to be the same. They're both going to be this value over here. And I'll write the form with the rationalized denominator. So what we have is root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. This is the Cartesian coordinate for this point over here. And that point actually corresponds to cosine and sine of 45 degrees. This horizontal distance over here, this is actually equivalent to cosine of pi on 4. And the vertical distance, this distance over here, draw a little uh, arrow going to there, this is the same as sine of pi on 4. And you can see now that cosine of pi on 4 is actually the same as sine of pi on 4. Both of those values are equal to 1 on square root of 2, which is the same as root 2 on 2. So this is a very important uh, thing to observe about this diagram. And we can also calculate tan. Tan is sine on cos. And if both of these guys are the same, then you're just going to be dividing by the same number as the top. The numerator and the denominator are going to be the same. So tan of pi on 4 is just equal to 1 on root 2 divided by 1 on root 2, and that's equal to 1. So the tangent at this point is equal to 1. And the tangent actually has a, a physical significance on this geometric diagram over here. You can actually draw the tangent line going from here down to this axis over here. I'm not going to do that in this video. There's going to be another video dedicated to tangent. So 
What we've done in this uh, video is we've started off with a square, we've turned that square into a special triangle. And that triangle is both a right angled triangle and an isosceles triangle. So once we had this triangle over here, we worked out the side lengths and the ratios of the sides and all the angles. We talked about radians as well. And the most important thing is that we actually worked out the xy coordinates of this point on the unit circle. And that point corresponds to the angle pi on 4, which is the same as 45 degrees. So then we've actually used that to decompose this into cosine and sine. The cosine tells you the horizontal component, and the vertical component is given by sine. So what we've done is we actually worked out what happens when you input pi on 4 into cosine and sine. And this is a special case where cosine and sine are equivalent. So this doesn't always happen. Usually cosine and sine are uh, wobbling about, and they're not equal to each other. But this is that special case where these guys are equivalent. Both the horizontal and vertical component are equivalent in this case. And I also want you to know that these two are equivalent forms of the same value. So we've got the form where the third is in the denominator and the rationalized form over here. So I've written the rationalized form uh, up over here on the diagram. And we've also worked out that the tangent, which is sine over cos, or opposite over adjacent, is the same as 1. So this is a special angle where tan is equal to 1. That's because sine and cos are equal to each other. And this over here, this is opposite, and this is adjacent. So sine over cos is the same as 1, because they are equal quantities. In the next video, we're going to be looking at uh, another triangle that lives inside the unit circle. So make sure you watch that other video. This is all uh, a precursor mathematical knowledge for quantum mechanics. And you can find all the other videos in the quantum mechanics playlist if you click over here.